I was afraid you wouldn't get here in time, Carlos. How is he? Too weak to be moved. Just as well he didn't try. Everyone is drunk with wine or joy at the surrender of the British. Did he operate on him? Yes. Did he give him any relief? Only temporary. I'm afraid it's hopeless, Carlos. I came as quickly as I could, sir. You needn't have hurried. I'm not quite ready to die yet. No, no. Don't bother with an examination, Carlos. Don't talk. Save your strength. I'm ready to go, gladly. Why not? We've won the war. I've done my work as well as I was able. Now it's up to you and Roy to see things through. Your work, General? Yes. Read that agreement. Are you speaking as my commanding officer or, or as my benefactor? I'm speaking as a man who hasn't long to live. It's the future I'm thinking of. The future that will need a strong hand at the helm, Dr. Carlos, to keep the Derby interests intact. You're that strong hand, Carlos. No man living owes to another what I owe to you. You gave me an education. You made a doctor out of me. But I cannot, said I. I will not sign an agreement which gives me control of your estate and fortune. That job belongs to Roy. Your son, a natural heir. I've already signed the agreement, Carlos. And not because father asked me to. I'm no good at business. I've got my practice to stick with. I want you to run things. Can you say the same for your wife? Why wouldn't Martha want it? You and she have everything in common. You grew up Yes, together. yes. We were both born of... I'm sorry. That's hardly gratitude. Oh, hang the gratitude. You were going to say that both you and Martha are children of indentured servants. Bond slaves, if you wish. What of it? It's what a man's got in here that counts. <coughs> Easy, sir. You are supposed to be resting, not making speeches. Sign that agreement. And I'll rest forever. Do you realize that if that agreement is carried out, it can mean revolution in Georgia? That's why I want a firm hand and a strong will to manage things. I've heard that your daughter Nancy has a very strong will also. You've never met Nancy? No. Nancy went to school in England. She has too much Tory left in her. Besides, she's a woman. You mean she'll fight me? <laughs> Tooth and toenail, my boy, but, but don't let that stop you. Sign the agreement. And when you get to Sangaree, Ask Nancy to show you my diary. She'll know what I meant. You'll be there yourself, Father. Sign it. I want to see it. Lights out. This much of the fight for liberty is won. The rest of the battle I leave to younger hands.
to fight the general's will like his sister Nancy? You better ask him. I haven't seen such excitement since the British gave up. I suppose everybody's asking the same question. How are Nancy and I taking it? Naturally, and I told him to ask you. Well, in that case, my undiplomatic friend, I'm going to leave by the back door. And I advise you to do the same if you're going up river to meet Carlos. Well, first I had to prepare the town for Carlos. Now I have to prepare Carlos for the town. <laughs> oh, Martha's planning a big reception for him. I'll tell him. Good. Say Nancy Darby's taking the will to court? Mm, it's so rumored about. But then why shouldn't she be against you? The future she had every right to expect is now to be managed by the son of a servant. Would you like it? I'm afraid not. Gabe, what is my enemy like? Mm. An angel on the outside and the devil in. Everything it takes to make a man's blood boil, Carlos. I warn you, first off, be on your guard. First off, I'm going to have to forget that I was ever the son of a bonded servant. I've forgotten it in my own case. We both owe everything we had to General Darby, and that's why we can't fail him now. And as for Nancy, my advice is to assault her with all your devastating charm. Tear down the walls and swim the moat! <laughs> Make as big a splash in Savannah. <laughs> You're Savannah bound. Do you mind if I come along? I already have one passenger. I don't think there will be any objections to another. Good. Madam, will you marry me? Oh, no, John, no, John, no, John, no. Oh, madam, since you are so cruel and that you do scorn me so, if I may not be your lover, madam, will you let me go? Oh, no, John, no, John, no, John, no. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's, everything's fine. fine. If we're going to be formal. No, no use being formal all the way to Savannah. What's your name? Dolly Lake. But where I come from, a gentleman usually introduces himself first. You don't consider me a gentleman. I don't know yet. Are you? Well, it depends on the place and the circumstances. At least I will introduce myself. Dr. Carlos Morales, late of the First Georgia Volunteers, at your service. Oh, so that's who you are. I sort of hoped I'd get a good look at you. Just to satisfy my curiosity. Oh, and uh, why should you be so curious? Because, uh, I happen to work for Miss Nancy Darby at Sangaree. Oh? And all anybody ever hears around there anymore is how Dr. Morales is going to come and manage her affairs. That's beginning to be all I hear, too. Frankly, Nancy Darby has me terrified before I ever set eyes on her. Then you better prepare yourself. You'll meet her tonight in Savannah. Will she be there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that doesn't fit with what I've heard about her. What have you heard about Nancy Darby? 
Connor, she's beautiful, proud, and headstrong. Her father advised me to fight her. Gabriel Thatch advises me to make love to her. What's your advice? How can I say, sir? I don't know yet how well you make love. Perhaps if I demonstrate. With a servant girl like me, Doctor? <laughs> now I know you're no gentleman. <laughs> Why not a girl like you? I used to be a Darby servant myself. My father sold himself for seven years to come to this country from Spain. Oh, yes, Dolly, it's so good to be back home and find a girl like you who can talk to a man on his own terms. You break my arm, Doctor. I don't know how to explain that to my mistress. You seem to be on very intimate terms with your mistress. Why, there is truth, Dolly. Care to join me? Come to the cabin. We'll give it a toast. Last day of liberty. <sighs> Tomorrow I take over my duties as manager of the Darby Company. You're pretty confident of yourself, aren't you? And why not? Because if Nancy Darby takes her father's will to court, you won't be managing anything. You'll just be a country sawbones. No, you wouldn't like that to happen to me, would you? Now, tell me, Dolly, tell me, just what kind of a monster does Nancy think I am? I'm sure she thinks you're a half-naked savage. <laughs> you're not very informative. I think all that wine is being wasted, Dolly. So that's the reason for the wine. Just to get me to talk about Nancy Darby. Well, isn't turnabout fair play? Why shouldn't I try to find out something about Nancy? She obviously sent you here to find out everything you could about me. What a suspicious mind you have. You have absolutely no reason to think that about me. On the contrary, I have several reasons. You see, when a beautiful girl like you travels alone in this part of the country, that is suspicious enough. And when she turns out to be Miss Nancy Darby's maid, who takes passage on a boat in which the only other passenger is Dr. Carlos Morales. Oh, yes. Then, then I smell a spy. And you know something? I don't like spies. Not even beautiful ones. Much less do I like people like Nancy Darby who use spies. I'm beginning to see that everything I've heard about you is true. You can hide a world of deceit under a very... Charming manner. Uh, tell me, what right have you to expect Nancy Darby to deal fairly with you after all you've done to her family? Now, wait a minute. We don't understand each other. That the Darby family has done a lot for me, yes, I admit. But so far, I've done very little for the Darbys. That's exactly what I mean. Everybody knows how General Darby took an interest in you as a boy. How he sent you to the finest schools and had you educated in Vienna. And then how you showed your gratitude by wheezing into his confidence when he was ill and dying and delirious with fever and getting him to put the Derby estate in your hands. 
So that's what they're saying in Savannah. Yes. And that's what Harvey Bristol will say when he takes the will to court. Bristol? And just who is Harvey Bristol? He's Miss Darby's lawyer. He also happens to be her fiancé. Oh, well, in that case, I can see why he would have a very personal interest in breaking the will. He would like to control the Darby fortune himself. Say that to Harvey Bristol and he'll call you out. I'm looking forward to it with pleasure. And another thing, next time you see your mistress, tell her this, that except for her father's last request, I wouldn't touch the Darby estate. But I made a promise to a dying man and that promise will be kept. And tell her also, that next time she wants information about me, to come herself, instead of sending her maid. Are you any better than a maid? I'm not acting like it, am I? <laughs> Let me go. We reached Savannah. <laughs> I know. And that means that very soon it will make a report to your mistress. All right? Let me give you something good to report. Very fine report, Dr. Morales. Very fine. I'm sure my mistress will appreciate it. And tell her that uh, if she's half as charming as her maid, she can count me as her most devoted servant. Darby sent this, sir, and asked you to wait. Thank you. Is Dr. Roy back? Uh, not yet, sir. I'll tell Mrs. Darby you're ready. Somebody's happy to see me around here. Happy to see you. It's, it's like living life all over again. It's like sunshine after a year. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry? Sorry for what? You're married to Roy now. Let's keep our past locked in our memories. Carlos, is this you talking? Lock up the past. What if I did marry Roy? You know why I married him? Because you loved him, I hope. You're the only man I've ever loved. Martha. No. No, let me say it. I've dreamed about you. Ever since those nights in Satcham Cove, before you went to Europe. Then you shouldn't have married him. Certainly I should have married him. You were studying medicine, going above me. I was just Martha Gillespie of Clay Creek. How else was I going to stay in your life? Martha, you have to stop thinking that way. We are friends now, understand? Good friends. <laughs> Couldn't you make that loving friends? Carlos, I've upset you and I'm sorry. When you feel the contempt of Nancy and her friends, you'll come to me of your own accord. I'd like the long deferred pleasure of meeting Nancy. If you think she's going to let you handle the Darby estate, you're crazy.
There beneath you, you see the cream of Savannah society. Now, let me point out your enemies. Can I trust you to know my enemies? <laughs> you can trust me to have your interest at heart. See those three gentlemen over there? Well, the one on the right is Judge Armstrong. He's a friend of Nancy's. He's also the judge who'll make the decision when she tries to fight the will. I'm sure you'll take good care of my Miss Starby. Arthur. Judge Armstrong, Dr. Tyrus, Dr. Morales. How do you do, sir? Nice to see you, Doc. And this gentleman you? is your rival, Androids, in the medical field, Dr. Bristol. How do you do? I might add that Dr. Bristol looks forward to his son Harvey's marriage to Nancy. Bristol fortunes are in need of repair, with Derby money. And, uh, where is their fabulous Nancy? I don't see her anywhere. Et vous amènerez votre partenaire? Oh, you, mademoiselle. I shall. Madame Bouchon, Mademoiselle Beaumont, Dr. Morales. And this is our Felix. Felix Pagnol, Dr. Morales. How do you do, sir? Enchanté, Doctor. Pagnol is another of Nancy's admirers. He chose our side during the war so he could plunder British ships. Since the war, he hasn't cared whose ships he plunders. A beautiful woman here in Savannah keeps him informed of sailing dates. Who is she? We're waiting for her now. You're accusing Nancy. You might tell her, but unless she drops the lawsuit against you, I can prove it. Blackmail is not one of Here's my Roy. Come on. I am? Hello. Hello, Roy. Well, well, how's the party going? Have you met everyone yet? Well, Martha's been doing the honors, but uh, I have yet to set eyes on your sister. Oh? I think Roy can present you far more graciously than I. Go with Carlos, dear. Well, how was the trip? Fine, fine. Delightful. I must tell you about it sometime. Yes. Yes, please do. You look worried. I am. And I may call upon you to confirm the reason for it. Well, you know you can't count on me. What's wrong? I hope I am. But I suspect plague. Plague? In Savannah? Yes. What's this about plague? I hope I'm wrong. Dr. Bristol, may I present that? We've met. I was just telling Carlos I'll want his opinion on the case. Well, I'll give you my opinion without even looking at the case. There's no plague here in Savannah. That's a broad statement to make, sir. Even an inexperienced doctor like yourself ought to know that epidemic diseases such as plague are caused by a mist. Uh, the technical word is miasma arising from the swamps at certain seasons of the year. Well, uh, this is the wrong season. It's not the wrong season in Africa. But just what do you mean by that? I mean that there have been several deaths on the slave ships, which might well be caused by plague. And the bodies are buried at sea, so that need not concern us here in Savannah. Ah, oh, Harvey, I don't think you've met Roy's assistant, Dr. Morales. This is my son, Harvey. Dr. Morales is not my assistant. If anything, the opposite is true. Roy has been trying to frighten us by talking about the plague. Sounds more likely that he's trying to justify the free clinic ordered by his father's will. However, we don't have to worry about it. I shall see that the will is set aside. Like your father, you offer your opinion before the evidence is in. Perhaps it is because no one ever listens to your opinion afterwards. I don't need instruction in the law from a bondsman. Gentlemen. You are guests in my house and there are ladies present. Your point is well taken, Roy. Although from what I've heard of Dr. Morales, he can't tell a lady from a kitchen maid. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carlos. I despise the man, but Nancy invited him here and there's not much I can do about it. I know. 
Oh, I think I see Nancy now. Ready for your fate? I'm looking forward to it. Well, making the grand entrance as usual, I see. Now I want you to meet your guest of honor, Nancy. May I present my friend, Carlos, Dr. Morales. How charming. Finally to meet the man I've heard so much about. Especially when you hear such intimate details. You'll have to excuse me, Dr. Morales. I have other guests. I didn't think even Nancy could be that discourteous to you. She had the right. You see, I... I bit her. I see that your reception has given you a bad impression of us. How did Martha Darby describe me? As a monster with horns and a tail? If she spoke of you at all. <laughs> I don't expect you to be so ungallant as to repeat her remarks. Then why ask me? To correct your impression, if possible. She told you that I was a pirate. That is untrue. If you wish to refute Mrs. Darby, you should speak to her. Not to me. Not at all. If I called Mrs. Darby a liar, her husband would be forced to uh, challenge me. Then I, in turn, would be obliged to shoot him. And he's far too charming to shoot. Besides, Martha Darby mixes the truth with her uh, exaggerations. She probably told you that I was one of Nancy Darby's admirers. Well, that seems to be the natural state for an attached male in Savannah. I'd marry Nancy tomorrow. To my regret, she won't have me. But that does not stop me from being in love with her. Love, Monsieur Pagnol, should be private. I'm surprised to hear you say that. Love is such a fascinating subject. Why treat it as though it were something to hide? What good does it to uh, be courageous on the battlefield and quail at the sight of Venus? Tell me, is it Nancy who keeps you in Savannah? Uh, only in a way of business. Uh, a business with which I'm afraid you'll interfere. Uh, <laughs> what business would that be? Now there, you see, you refuse to talk of love, but you are willing to discuss dollar subjects. Business, Dr. Morales, not love, should be private. Lovely party. Yes, isn't it? So you must get your information from Nancy. I'll take your advice on that anyway. May I have the honor? I have already spoken for the next number. Maybe the lady hasn't answered you yet. The lady is quite capable of choosing her partners. For what I see, I cannot say that I admire her choice. Is the queen less bold than her maid? Since you were born without manners, I shall have to teach you some. I'll defer that first lesson until you learn some yourself. Let's not spoil the evening. When low-bred sons of servants are permitted to insult gentlemen, the evening is already spoiled. The gentleman has his remedy. Please, please. It's not the time or place, Harvey. Bonsoir, 
Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Bonsoir. Votre soirée est charmante. Oh, merci, merci. Are you enjoying yourself also? Very much, thank you. Madame, monsieur. Haven't you humiliated me enough for one evening? Why can't you leave me alone? I should have asked you the same question on the boat. Your only reason for being there was to, to expose me as a vulgar, uncultured backwards man. Isn't that true? And that's exactly what you showed yourself to be. Why? Because I insisted upon kissing a servant wench? I still prefer the wench to the lady. Maybe you do too. You seem to be in the mood for insulting everyone tonight. Tell me something. What did you think you'd gain by, by playing the role of a maid? I learned that you were brutal, overbearing, and completely unsuited to managing the Derby estates. Therefore, I shall continue with my plan to have my father's will set aside. Those are Harvey Bristol's words, not yours. I'll tell you why you were on that boat. You were there because you are a woman and you think like one. I'll never acknowledge you as my master in any way. Then Dolly Lake shouldn't have returned my kiss so, so ardently. But I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you for being a spy because you were acting for yourself. You should have thought of that on the boat. And spoil a happy memory. Thank you. Any compromise with you is impossible. I'll see you in court. Dr. Morales and Miss Darby have agreed that they will accept the decision of this court as final and binding. As a moving party, counsel for Miss Darby is entitled to speak first. Your Honor, we have argued that the will of the late Victor Darby must be set aside for several valid reasons. It should suffice that it is illegal, and in addition, it cannot be carried out. It is unjust to the Darby heirs. And finally, we have shown that Victor Darby was of unsound mind when he executed it. The will is illegal because it was executed in the colony of Vermont, whereas the Darby property is located in the colony of Georgia. The will was signed at the end of the war in the United States of America. We are one country now, not 13. Will the court please instruct Dr. Morales in procedure so I shall not be interrupted again? Dr. Morales will withhold his comments until it is his turn to speak. Will counsel proceed? Next, as to the impossibility of carrying out the terms of this will, we do not have to dwell on the fact that Victor Darby's choice of Dr. Morales as trustee for the estate makes failure certain in the first place. Here is a man born of indentured servants, raised in the backwoods and possessing no gentlemanly refinements whatsoever, who still expects to administer the richest... Man who insults the backwoods insults me. Mr. Thatch will control himself or leave the courtroom. Dr. Morales' friends prove my point, that Victor Darby had to be of unsound mind to select such a trustee. What could be more unjust to the rightful heirs? You speak for my sister, Harvey, not for me. In fact, Your Honor, I can rest my case upon this single point, that Victor Darby was a mentally unbalanced man. That is evident from the will itself. In it, he directs his estate to establish a free clinic to squander money on schools for the children of servants and slaves. Why, he even goes so far as to order payment of wages. Imagine that, wages to bondsmen so they can buy their freedom before their term of indenture is finished. That is madness. With such a precedent, our entire economy could collapse. Only a lunatic could dream of such a program. And that is precisely why Victor Darby had to choose a lunatic like Dr. Morales. I'll protest that statement. Out of court. Protest and be hanged. Order. Order, order. Will you proceed, counsel? I've stated my case. Then the floor is yours, Dr. Morales. Your Honor, the task of directing the Darby estates is not one I sought. It was given me under oath by a dying man, a man whom my opponent has been pleased to call a lunatic. During his lifetime, Victor Darby accumulated the greatest fortune in Georgia. Is that the work of a lunatic? He used that fortune unselfishly for the benefit of his state and country. 
not only dreaming of liberty and freedom, but turning those dreams into reality. Could a madman do that? And he knew that if his work was to continue after his death, he could not trust it to a woman who is determined to marry a man opposed to every principle for which her father stood. That woman is sitting before me. I'm going to ask her for an honest answer to one question, and I let my whole case stand or fall by her answer. Miss Darby, do you believe your father was insane? Of course he was insane. I put the question to Miss Darby. Do you believe your father was insane? No. No! My father was the wisest man I've ever known. And I hate you for trying to make me say he wasn't. And now, Harvey Bristol, I'll take up some of your personal remarks Sir, about me. In view of Miss Darby's testimony concerning her father's sanity, the court rules that the will be upheld. And if either of you men invites a duel in this courtroom, you both go to jail. A gentleman duels only with his equals, but I shall find time to cut you to pieces. You see, Carlos, Nancy's really a Darby at heart. Now you can make her a director of the company. Yes, and go through the same fight every day of my life. Eh? <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Morales. As director of the Darby Company, you automatically inherit a seat in the Savannah City Council. I'm putting your name up as health officer tonight, Carlos. Make sure you get there. I'll be along. As soon as Gabe gets here. Still worrying about Nancy. Why don't you stop by the docks on the way to the meeting tonight? She may not have left town yet. I seem to be the only one who hasn't congratulated you. Thank you. To the future. To the future. I wish you'd say to our future. Tell me, how was it today being called names by the aristocrats? Not very pleasant, naturally. Beginning to see what I mean? That's the way it's going to be all the time. But you and I are on top now. We could take our winnings and go... Martha, please, I thought we agreed on... I've agreed to nothing. Can't you leave me a little pride, Carlos? You could tempt the angels, Martha. And you're no angel. No, I'm not. If it weren't for Roy... You see, it's not the principle that's worrying you. Call it friendship. But I'm not trying to break your friendship with Roy. I'm sorry, Martha. I have to go. You're going to the doctor find Nancy. Eavesdropping is a bad habit. I don't know how you can stand her after what she's done to you. Martha, you have to stop. I hate her. Do you understand? I hate her. I hate her. I hate her. She's a pirate. She and Felix Pagliari. I don't care to hear it. All right, Carlos. You've let me know how you feel. I won't embarrass you anymore. But just remember that... You... you don't understand. Just remember that I wanted to help you. But not where Nancy's concerned. All right. Let's forget we ever had this conversation. I think you'd better go.
That's Nancy's boat. She's still here. But if we wait, we'll miss the meeting. We have time for a drink, Andy. But Carlos is too important. Five minutes. Pretty girl who gets a kiss and goes and tells her mother, that's a very foolish thing and don't deserve another. For tonight will marry, marry me, for tonight will marry, marry me, for tonight will marry, marry me, tomorrow will be sober. I'm looking for a foreign dog called Morales who needs a whipping. I heard that Dr. Morales was going to attend a meeting of the town council. I just wanted to let him know that I don't meet with dogs. You seem to have lost your weapon. Have you lost your courage, too? Personally, I wouldn't soil my hands with you. Goliath will give you a worse beating. I have nothing against this man. If you don't want to fight, forget it. <laughs> to the council meeting, we may as well see that he gets there. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm certain that Dr. Morales is coming. And in view of the importance of his testimony concerning the plague, I'm requesting the committee to postpone action until he arrives. And I say that if we're going to elect a health officer, we might as well do it right now. I'm a candidate myself, and I shall be glad to look into this... Uh, alleged case of plague that has Dr. Darby so worried. Dr. Bristol is anxious to hold the election now only because at the moment he controls the majority of votes. And why not? And besides, I happen to know that Dr. Morales won't get here. He's uh, being detained. What do you mean by that, sir? Exactly what I say. It's a waste of time to wait. I appeal to the chair for another 10 minutes. In the meanwhile, we can hear Captain Bronson's report on the presence of pirates in coastal waters. Dr. Darby's request for 10 minutes doesn't seem unreasonable to me, and uh, I'm going to grant it. Let's hear from Captain Bronson first. Go ahead, Captain. Chairman, members of the council. <laughs> Looks like a 
brawl, Miss Nancy. Nothing to be worried about. I'll walk from here. Yes, ma'am. I'd hope to speak to you before you left for Sangari. Is it always your custom, Dr. Morales, to greet women while you're half naked? Uh, no, no, only when circumstances make it necessary. Nancy, in spite of our past differences, I want you to accept the position as a director of the Derby Company. Your father asked for that in his will. A directorship, under your guidance. Unless, of course, I prove such a failure that uh, I lose my position. And that's exactly why I intend to become a director. I managed the plantations all during the war, and I've no desire to see you ruin them now. So if I have your very kind permission to continue managing that which is already mine, I'll go. Naturally, I will expect a regular accounting. For that, you must come to Sangaree. Is that a command or an invitation? Could I command you? An invitation, then. I'll accept. I trust you'll forgive the interruption, but I must remind Carlos he's already late for a meeting. Is there? Uh, yes, I, I regret to say the man on the horse is your fiancé. <laughs> we had a slight altercation. I'm taking him to his father for medical attention. Harvey Bristol is no longer my fiancé. Oh? May I say that I'm glad to hear that? That doesn't forgive you for fighting. Oh, but I, I don't need your forgiveness. Now tell me, if Harvey Bristol was supposed to accompany you to Sangaree, now you will need another bodyguard. May I offer my services? Uh, forgive me, but Miss Darby already has a bodyguard. I did not wish to interrupt your business conversation, but I do not plan to give up my evening boat ride. I must say there seems to be no doubt about who won the argument. One rival a night is enough to dispose of. Now let's get on to the meeting, Carlos. And so, Mr. Chairman, I submit that Dr. Darby's already had more than his ten minutes, and I move that we proceed to the election of a health officer at once. I second the motion. I'm positive Dr. Morales and Mr. Thatch will be here. And I'm positive Dr. Morales will not be here. There's been delay enough. Yes, Please, gentlemen, order. I'm sorry, Dr. Darby, but you've had the time you asked for. All in favor signify by raising the right hand. I count seven in favor. Those opposed? I count five votes. The motion is carried, and nominations for health officer are now in order. I nominate Dr. Bristol. Second. Dr. Bristol's been nominated. Are there any further nominations? Mr. Chairman, in spite of his absence, I'm going to nominate Dr. Morales. We want a man as health officer who will take measures to protect Savannah, not a man who seeks office only so he can destroy its power. Whom do you mean by that? If the shoe fits. Order. This is not a time for campaign speeches, Dr. Darby. Who seconds Dr. Morales' nomination? I second it. Then I move the nominations be closed. If there are no objections, it is so ordered. Are you ready for the vote? Yes. Ready. 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 In the absence of Dr. Morales, I'm going to rule that neither candidate shall have a vote. And I'll ask Dr. Bristol to leave the room while the votes are being counted. <laughs> I can win without voting for myself. Very well. All in favor of Dr. Bristol for health officer, please raise the right hand. Six for Bristol. Those for Dr. Morales. I'm sorry, Dr. Morales, but you'll have to retire at the ante room while we vote on your name for health officer. Certainly. We are voting on Dr. Morales. Those in favor, raise the right hand. Two, four, six. It looks like a tie vote. Why, how can that be? No. No, I see seven. Seven for Dr. Morales. Dr. Morales wins and is hereby appointed health officer of Savannah. Ah.
It's the biggest harvest the Derby Company has ever known. And the credit all belongs to you, Carlos. These six months under your management have been... Not my management, Roy. General Darby's. He knew that free men work harder than slaves. It's really a beautiful harvest. The harvest means nothing until it reaches the London docks. You're thinking about the ships we lose to pirates. Yes. And also that the Derby Bell is sailing with a fortune. A few losses like that, and the Derby Company will be bankrupt. Captain Bronson is a good man. He can be trusted. I wasn't thinking of Captain Bronson. <laughs> That's where we parked, Carlos. Joe, when you get home, tell Martha not to wait dinner. I'll be late. That fork leads to Sangaree. I'm only too well aware of it. You should have gone before, Carlos. Nancy asked permission to run Sangaree as she pleased. I've given it to her. But that doesn't rule out a social call. Ask her to show your father's diary. And don't be afraid to smile at her. Miss Darby is saying tell her that Dr. Morales is here and would like to see her. Yes, sir. If you'll wait in the study. Listen. Yes, sir? Haven't I seen you before? I couldn't say, sir. Yes, your name's Priam. You were at the reception the night I arrived in Savannah. I thought you belonged to Mrs. Darby. I am a freedman, sir. I work where I am paid. <laughs> yes, of course. And these are very, very pleasant surroundings, eh? Finally on at Sangaree with a visit. Nancy. I see you've been reading Father's diary. The last one is the most interesting. It contains his plans for the future. You must read it. Some other time. I came to check on the Sangaree cargo. They tell me Captain Bronson is here. Yes, the Derby Bell is loading now. I suppose you'd like to inspect it? It's part of my job. And the Sangaree plantations as well? I'll consider that an honor, if you'll accompany me. 
I'll consider that a command. Can't we call it a truce? Just for today. <laughs> Must it end so soon? Come along. I'll be your guide to Sangaree. This acreage uh, produced the largest crop of rice in our history. I'll get the figures. No, no. What if I can't tell you about the crops? Tell me about Sangari. I've heard that it was in a state of decay after the war. Felix Pagnol did much to repair it. Pagnol? Mm-hmm. Father lent him money during the war, and he's taking this means to repay it. Is that the business with which he was afraid I would interfere? Must be. There's a warehouse. I've seen many warehouses. Captain Bronson will be there. Oh, yes. Fine man, Captain Bronson, yes. like to see the warehouse. Come along. Something of yours we tried. Tobacco. Recognize it? Yes. There's quite a market for it, too. As a matter of fact, we plan to grow some more. Want the rest of that cargo as soon as you can, and make no mistakes. Those hogs is the next. Keep them rolling. Captain Bronson. Captain. I'll be out of here within the hour. We'll pick up the tobacco at Darbyville, and I'll wait for the tide and head for the open sea. But what about the cargo at Savannah? Oh, those barrels on the dock are dummies. Empty. If there are any pirate spies in town, they'll be watching those barrels. By the time they'll find out they're nothing but decoys, Darby Bell will be halfway to London. <laughs> we'll clear the bar by midnight. Work before, work this time. You stay at Sangaree for dinner? I wish I could. Well, surely the Darby Company can spare you for one evening. I wasn't thinking of the company. There is so much to be done. You see, in spite of everything Roy and I have done, Play keeps increasing. I have to be back tonight for a meeting. Of course. Forgive me for being so selfish. Selfish? Putting my own pleasure over the misfortunes of others. Carlos, I want to apologize. You don't have to. Father was right. It's, it's not just the Derby Company. The hospitals, the schools. They all needed a, a stronger hand. 
when the plague passes. Come back to Sangaree. I will. Captain Bronson, I've got to get to Savannah. Is there a way you can put me ashore without spoiling your plans? You know, I... Well... All right. Good. <laughs> All the merchants in Savannah have cooperated with the rat control program except one. I want to ask Dr. Bristol why he won't let the committee inspect his warehouse. What's all this fuss about rats? It's only a wild superstition that rats cause plague. For 200 years, men have known that plague occurs only where rats exist. I don't pretend to know what the connection is. But I do know that as long as Dr. Bristol won't cooperate, the entire community is in danger. That's right. One man can spoil the whole show. We need full cooperation. What have you to say for yourself, Bristol? I have this to say. I've complied with your stupid regulations. Then why won't you let the committee inspect your warehouse? The word of a gentleman should be sufficient. I have every right to protect my property. And if anyone tries to enter my warehouse or inspect Bristol ships without my permission, my guards will open fire. Gentlemen, we don't want any violence if we can avoid it. Roy Darby has sent for sulfur to fumigate the warehouses. By the time it arrives, Bristol may have changed his mind. Let's adjourn for the evening. I think Bristol is importing slaves illegally and keeping them in his warehouse. That's why he won't stand for inspection. That could be cause of plague. We ought to fire the warehouse. Bristol is... <laughs> <laughs> All that cargo on the Derby Pier is fake. We're supposed to be waiting for it to be loaded while the Derby Bell slips out to sea. You're sure of it? Well, the captain gets his information straight from the horse's mouth. We join the Frenchman at the mouth of the Wilmington and take the Darby Bell as she passes. The pilot already has the information. I could take a shot at him. No. We would lose our only chance of saving the Darby Bell. Did you stop, Captain Bronson? There is one possibility. With a tight end, a light boat could cut through the marshes and gain 15 miles between here and the bay. That's probably what they're going to do. Yeah. Get Billy and meet me at the sloop. I'll go by the Derby warehouse and get some powder and fuses. All right. How did the pirates know she was sailing? There is only one person. Get going. Every word you said to me today was a lie. Every smile, every gesture was a lie. What are you saying? You're a spy and a traitor. You won my confidence so you could tell your friend Pagnol about the sailing of the Derby Bell. That's why you're here. That's not true. Why would I want the pirates to take my own ship? To get all the profit instead of one third. 
to ruin the Darby Company and me. Look at you, the aristocrat. Look at you. If you were a man, I'd... You're the lowest wench that ever walked the streets of Savannah. <laughs> Let's go. Closer to the shore. You know, Carlos, when those men talked about the Frenchman, they might have met the name of their ship, not the captain. Who else would name his boat the Frenchman? Get the powder in place now. Set the fuses now. All right. We ram the pilot midships and swim for it. That's our game. sail again. There's a Darby Bell pulling for the bar right now. Something tells me that Felix Spaniol wouldn't have trusted himself on that ship. I think I know where to find him. Go on to the stable and saddle the horses. We are going to Sangari and settle with Panyol. Hi, 
I thought you had left town for good. As usual, you are mistaken. A mistake I would like to see remedied. What are you doing here? I can't see that's any of your business. I suggest you come tomorrow. Dr. Darby's away for the evening. How convenient for you. <laughs> got home. The place has been like a tomb with Roy gone. I'm leaving again, right now. Carlos, you're wet. The usual result of being in water. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm on a pilot hunt. We sunk the ship. Now I'm after the man. Who do you think the pirate is? You told me his name yourself. Felix Pagnol, of course. Oh, yes, that's right. Pagnol and Nancy. Didn't I tell you the truth, didn't I? Yes, you were right, Martha. We are two of a kind. There is no place for us among the Darbys. Why couldn't you have learned that sooner? As soon as I've settled with the pirate, I'm going away. No. No, Carlos. Carlos. Looks like Nancy's horse. Let's take a look. <laughs> Head injury. Billy, I need my surgical kit. Gabe, find Roy and tell him to get to Sangaria as soon as possible. Billy, he's bringing everything I need for the operation. Tell the other ones to wait downstairs. Yes, Dr. Morelli's. Do you mean you're going to cut her with a knife? Yes. A piece of bone is causing pressure. It has to be removed immediately. Oh. She'll be all right. Tell Priam to come here. I may need him. He's not home. He went away. done all I can. You must have something to eat. Stay with her. Let me know as soon as she wakes up.
Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Oh, Roy. Have you seen Nancy? She's asleep now. Carlos, how can I ever thank you? I... I don't deserve any thanks. Her accident was my fault. Roy. Why didn't you tell me your father wanted Nancy and me to marry? He expected you to read it yourself. But don't you see that nothing could have been worse? There is a limit to the amount of dictation a woman will take, even from a man like Victor Darby. No wonder she's hated me so much. Hate you? What do you mean? It's true, but now I understand why. When she awakens, tell her that, that I forgive her and hope she forgives me. Why don't you tell her yourself? Because I'm leaving. And tell her also that I'm resigning as director of the Derby Company. Both of you can carry on without me. Carlos, I don't understand. You will, Roy. You will, in time. Right now, there is one last duty I want to perform. Felix Spagnol must be in Savannah. And it's about time the country gets rid of him. Oh, Dr. Morales, don't tell me. I can read the thought in your eyes. You're about to challenge me, right? You saved me the trouble. Do you accept? Unfortunately, your impetuous friend Gabriel Thatch has already challenged me. Gabe has challenged you? And as a man of honor, I must give him satisfaction first. After I have uh, disposed of him, I'm at your service, if you're still in the mood. Your friend will need a surgeon when I've finished with him. A fool, Gabe, that's what you are, a fool. Pagnol has fought a dozen swan duels and lived to brag about it. Then why are you so anxious to take my place? Because... Oh, no, my friend, you've had all the fun so far. Gabe. Pagnol is mine. But you can act as my second. You don't understand. Especially since Monsieur Pagnol is going to need the services of a surgeon when I finish with him. Carlos, we've been looking all over town for you. What's wrong? Just more of the same. We're ready to start firing sulfur in the warehouses as soon as you check our procedure. What about the Bristol warehouse? If he won't open his doors, we'll knock him down. All right, let's go. You see, my friend, you're a very busy man. You need someone like me to take care of these small details for you. Don't forget, be at King's Island Landing at 8. All right. Bend to the left. Let's go. All right. Spread that sulfur inside. When you're through, seal the doors. That takes care of every warehouse except Bristol's, and he's next. Are you coming to the Bristol warehouse? You will have less trouble with Bristol if I'm not with you. Besides, I have to attend an affair of honor. I'll be with you as soon as I can. Let's go, Billy. Gentlemen, the fault is mine. 
I have serious duties in Savannah. My only wish is to finish this affair as soon as possible. As referee colonel, I suppose you have the weapons. Certainly. Since Monsieur Pagnol furnished the pistols, Mr. Thatch may choose first. And Monsieur Pagnol, may I have first choice of knives. A well-balanced blade. Bravo. Well done. This promises to be more exciting than I thought. Will the gentleman listen to instructions? First, it is my duty to ask you to reconcile this quarrel without bloodshed. In that case, we will proceed. Mr. Thatch and his second will walk 40 paces. Monsieur Pagnol and his second will go a like distance. When you are in position, I shall expect you, Dr. Morales, and you, Mr. Crowder, to inform me by a shout. Then, at a signal from my pistol, the duel will begin. Are there any questions? No. It's clear enough. We're ready. Very well, then. Go to your positions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. Rather here. Oh. Dirty rat. That's why he selected a swamp to cover a murder. Well-thrown knife, Gabe. I regret that I cannot allow Mr. Thatch credit for the throw. As you see, Mr. Thatch still has his knife in his hand. That is my weapon in the wretched man at your feet. When I heard Mr. Thatch raging, I realized that one of your enemies might have decided this was an excellent time to commit murder and blame it on the Frenchman. Did you know, Doctor, that there was a pirate brig by the name of the Frenchman? What? I thought the name referred, referred to, to me. I assure you, the brig was not mine. However, if you still seek an answer, I suggest that you examine Harvey Bristol's warehouse. Better still, I'll take you there myself. I'm not going to wait any longer. Steady. Put down that gun, Bristol. We're going to clean up your warehouse just like the rest. Nobody's entering my warehouse. I'll shoot the first man who tries. Here's Dr. Morales. He's health officer here. Let him talk to Bristol. Talk to Bristol. Keep his attention. Will you listen to me, Bristol? I'll listen to no one. You've no right to trespass on my property. What are you afraid of? A 
If your warehouse is clean, there's no harm inspecting it. I said nobody's entering this warehouse. And I mean that. Clear out, all of you. Tell them to drop their guns. Come on. Come on. All right, drop them. of his stolen cargo. So this is why Bristol wouldn't allow inspection of his warehouse. And Harvey must I have... know, I know. But Brian, why Brian? Brian was originally in the pay of Martha Darby. Yes. Then it was Martha that Harvey Bristol wanted to see the night we sank his ship. Monsieur Fagnol, will you accept my apologies? Mine too, sir. Gladly. Come on. Carlos! Carlos! Well, what did you find besides stolen cargo? Rats by the hundreds. And what's worse, the bodies of nine slaves, dead of the plague. That was a source of infection. Burn it! What about the stolen Derby merchandise? Burn it! Bring your torches! Inside! Listen! Where is your son? Where is Harvey? I don't know. I find him. Looking for Harvey. Harvey. Harvey's dead. He he hired Brian to kill you. I came to stop him. But I was too late. Uh, and Harvey, when he heard you were in the warehouse, he wanted to run away. So I shot him. And now I'm gonna die too. But why, Martha? Why did you join forces with Harvey Bristol? For years I wanted to destroy Nancy. Call it envy. Call it revenge or just plain greed. But when Harvey wanted to kill you, Carlos, I just couldn't, I couldn't. Carlos, you and I together. You and I. We could have had everything. We could have... Roy. Roy. I've been a poor wife to you. Forgive me. Bubonic plague. <laughs> Carlos. Roy, Nancy's waiting for you at Sangare. He's gone.
How is she? Oh, fine, fine. Carlos. You see? Your father understood the inevitable. He might have emphasized love a little more and business a little less. He was wise enough to let us find love for ourselves.